Welcome back to another episode of Leon's Garage Adventures. It's a uh, travel episode, and we thought since we've been getting a couple questions about living in a camper, we'd have Leon answer a couple of them as we went along. All right. I live in a camper. All right. And that's it. That's it. End of the episode. You guys are great. Tune in next time to Leon's Garage Adventures. Would you call it trailer life? No, because I don't feel like trash. Okay. Maybe we should cut that out. No, oh, I guys. think that's fantastic. I think we should totally leave that. <laughs> so, what brought you to Florida? Well, I threw a dart at a map and it landed in the trash. Yes. So, as you guys know, Leon moved up to Georgia two months ago? Yeah, two or three months ago, right? It's been a while. For anyone that doesn't know, Leon is currently living in a 1990 Toyota Winnebago camper van. I call it the awesome box on wheels. I don't really call it that, but I just did, and it's great, and I think it's going to stick with it. What made you decide to buy a camper van? Uh, you, actually. We were on Craigslist looking up Tahoes or something and stumbled across a Toyota Dolphin and the moment I seen it I was like well this is this is practically the greatest vehicle ever made out of anything so uh, after looking at about what 30 of them at least yeah and then going to see at least 10 of them in person we stumbled across this one and uh, Was the one. Yeah, basically when we drove up to it, we knew this was too good to be true. And the goal was to get it as cheap as humanly possible. Which you did. Yeah, we got it cheap. We did. Total price of 3500 And the thing was that uh, we tire kicked them so good that Andrew was saying, hey, this thing's going to need tires here pretty soon. And uh, he had me believe in them. Until after we left, I was like, man, we need to get tires? like, nah, man, we're just negotiating. <laughs> so, yeah, it ended up being a great deal. Leon went ahead and put hardwood floors in it. Uh, basically got an external generator hooked up so that he could run his air conditioning and or the fridge or everything combined while he's cruising along or he's to stop for the evening. Yeah, and actually I ran the generator all the way down while driving. Oh, that's right, because... You lost an AC belt. Oh, not only that, I had uh, food in the fridge. I didn't want it to go bad. But yeah, I was driving and uh, I started smelling some rubber. I'm like, man, this, uh, that doesn't smell good at all. I thought maybe someone blew out a tire or something at first. And then I'm like, nah, that's definitely from this. No. So I shut off the AC and the smell went away. And you know, I uh, started sweating and stuff because it was pretty hot. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna turn it back on and see what happens. And I turned it on and the AC was just blowing hot air. It was, uh, it was pretty bad, so. How many miles did you have left in your journey when that happened? Well, this was probably right after Atlanta. So literally <laughs> all of the it. whole trip. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny part was, that was the only new belt that I just put on it. And it somehow came off, it's it's the middle belt, and it came off without taking any other belts out, so that was impressive. It must have walked around the, the yeah. first belt somehow without it's amazing. throwing it off. Because it would probably be humanly impossible to install it the same way that yeah. it came off. Yeah, you'd never be able to. At least not without damage. So, what would you say is the worst thing about living inside the Toyota camper van? That's a good one. Like, do you wake up hating something about it? Do you go to bed hating something uh, you about it? You know what? The worst thing is that the bed is over the cab. And I've gotten used to crawling up there like every night, so... It's, it's like a bunk bed almost. Yeah, you, you definitely get your uh, workout pulling yourself up there. I'm, I'm used to it now, so it's not a big deal. But um, actually, I turn over a lot in my sleep. 
So when I first got it, there was quite a few times when I was hitting my face on the ceiling or an arm punching the wall or the window or something. Like, it's, it's a pretty tight space up there. What would you say is your favorite thing about owning it? Favorite thing is, like, what comes to my mind is freedom. That's what I was gonna say, mobility. I like that you can get in it in a matter of minutes and be ready to hit the road. Yeah, literally when Leon showed up at my house, he just asked for a little bit of electricity and essentially handed him an extension cord. And that was it, he was done. Great to live there forever in your driveway. Or not. Also, I'd be curious to know how much electricity you actually use. It can't be much because it's literally a fridge and an AC unit. Well, you can get those meters that plug into the wall and then tell you whatever you're taking from that wall. I'd just be curious to know, like, why draw this much? So if electric prices are this, I'll pay you this for living here. That's a good idea. At a campsite. If they're like, yeah, hookups $20 a night. $20 a night? That's literally a week of electricity. I looked it up and it's about like $30 a night now. Oh Isn't that God. crazy? You gotta provide your own house. Yeah. It doesn't make any it, sense. It's funny because it's literally would cost me less in gas to run the generator for the night, so what do I need a campsite for? Right. And that was kind of another reason why I like the Toyota so much, is because it's so small. I could pull it in a parking lot. I'm good to go. Like, yeah. hey, Walmart, here I am for the night. Right. Now, I don't know if this is true about all RVs of this nature, but Leon's accessories and everything run off of the same fuel that you put in the gas tank. So I don't know if the bigger Winnebago's or the bigger campers have for the generator an extra fuel tank just for the generator. I don't know, but I love that it runs on normal gasoline. Yep. Actually, on the way down, I was kind of thrown away. Uh, around the idea of the diesel, but that seems like a whole lot of work. And you most likely wouldn't be using new parts. Oh, no, because I, I found a, a few people that um, have done the swap, and they they come in the Toyotas already, so you'd basically just Oh, you mean getting the Toyota diesel? Yes. Like out of the same year? A Toyota Hilux. Yes. Diesel. Yes, and buying like the front clip like you would for a JDM car or something. Yeah. Yep. But you still have to do the harness and all that too, so. I wonder how much there could be to it though. Um I've seen a few like I seen a few swaps done and uh there was a guy that did a actually a really good uh, write up on it and a lot of pictures and stuff and he said most of it was literally unbolt and bolt. Um he had some transmission stuff going on, uh, but he also um, was a standard and a four-wheel drive. Uh, it is a different transmission belt housing, though, from what I have, so we would probably have to look for the automatic, which is going to be pretty hard to find because in other countries, nobody drives, drives automatic. automatic. It'd be pretty sweet though, but you'd have to find out, is it all worthwhile? So for instance, buying the whole front clip, because it's probably the much easier way to do everything. Yeah. So buying the whole front clip, having it delivered, or finding a way to pick it up. Now you've got a trailer, so you could theoretically do that. Uh, you, you just have to bring it to a main port. Yeah. But, if let's say you can get everything done for three grand, how much fuel could you buy for three grand? in the same amount of time like but I think also the diesel kind of plays in that it does get better gas mileage well, mileage Shit. Um, also it definitely has a lot more torque and I think it would pull it around a lot better yeah so uh, something else Leon had mentioned to me was that it was kind of struggling with the Georgia Hills yes yeah it, um, it definitely had a hard time keeping up with traffic, but it kind of has a hard time keeping up with traffic anywhere. Um, so the average speed is 55 to 60. You can go, you can go 65 or 70, but you're really pushing it. 
and there needs to be like no other cars on the road. Um, okay. I suppose it does have the aerodynamics of a brick. An entire Tesla drivetrain times two. Yeah, front and rear, that'd be cool. Four wheel drive, jacking up a little bit with some snow tires. Launch control. I'm about it. World's fastest. Zero to about 65 would be insane. All of your all of your three utensils, your spoon, knife, and fork would just go flying. Yes. I would have to put them in a drawer or something. And then staple the drawer shut. Absolutely. I like how everything in the RV is mounted the other way, so stuff will only come flying out if you're taking corners at a ridiculous speed, which you would never do because you'd roll over. Yeah. The only thing I've found is that if you have anything on the floor, the only way to make it move really is yeah, sideways, or if you step on the brakes, because it has, it does not have enough power to actually throw it backwards. There's been a couple times where I've lost some things going on the brakes though. When driving it. I was going to say, does it feel like a normal Toyota pickup truck? But it's got that four foot of overhang in front of you. Yeah, that too. It kind of, it kills vision at uh, stoplights for sure. Like I, I can't pull all the way up because I can't see the light. I have to crouch forward. No, you should get what I got for the hot rods. It's a prism that you stick on your windshield and it reflects Ooh, that's a traffic pretty, light, so you can kind of cheat. It's for all like really chopped and channeled. That's pretty rides. awesome. That's a good idea. I was thinking about putting semi truck wheels on it. You ever seen them? Where they have like the polished wheels and they're on like a little low profile tire and then like slam it down just a little bit, not too slam, because I don't want to drag off everything that's underneath it. Right. But like, I would like to lower it like four inches. I think that thing would look pretty cool. But could you still drive it that low? So that's why I haven't done it, because... Unless you had an air ride. Yeah, and I think the back's a little bit lower than the front, too, already. What is the suspension in that? Leaf spring? It's leaf spring. That's why it's real wobbly. I, I need to figure out... I'm thinking about putting air shocks on the back. Because it has a lot of side-by-side -side play, like just... <laughs> it feels like a boat for sure. Yes, yeah, the white pearl. The white pearl. You're definitely more of a Barbosa character. Yes. I don't know, a bad guy? No. But sometimes a good guy? Yeah. Sometimes die for no reason at the end of a movie that wasn't called for. sell those for back cars. I don't think they're that bad a price actually. This is just a little tiny pump. Yeah. That would, I, I thought about that. The only thing that would really uh, keep me from doing it would be in the front. Like I could hear it out obviously, but I wouldn't be able to drive if it was too low. Yeah. And also, you'd have to have a set ride height so that your steering wouldn't change and because yeah. I think with that it would really be all over the place. I've seen with the modern ones that they've got like a stop. Or well something. they've got three main settings and one is like driving height so it lifts it up a little bit. Two is let's say completely slammed and three is maxed out up. So parking you put it in a two and then when you're hauling something or you've got a couple of hundred extra pounds in it put it on three. Oh boy, what do we got going on here? Yeah, just put some cones out in the middle of the road for no reason. <laughs> Have a good day, guys. <laughs> I think that's about it, really. So it's perfectly Maybe. sustainable to live in a Toyota camper van. 
but there is one thing that you've told me. It's small? You, no. I mean, of course it's small. <laughs> you don't really use the bathroom facilities in it. That is true. Uh, that's just a preference, though. You could. Because you, currently everywhere you go, you have the option to yes. just use normal facilities inside a house. Yes. There's nothing saying that you can't, and you've tested them all. The yeah. shower, yeah, yeah, everything works. The bathroom. I just prefer a full size everything instead of, I mean, the, the toilet in it's a, it's about that big around. <laughs> and just imagine sitting on top of a donut. Exactly. <laughs> Did you ever get rid of that sticky spot next to the sink? No, I'm scared to touch it. Jeez. I need to. Well, have you seen that in two wrecked 2500s? No. We need to turn this thing around, son. Boy. Oh. Maybe I'll still be there when we leave. <laughs> no, they were on a trailer. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so around the sink area, I'm looking for that matching trim piece. How are you possibly going to find that? Well, when I find it, I'll fix it. When you buy another Toyota Winnebago camper home. I'm, I'm working on that. I'm waiting for the guy to get back home. Really? Oh, because yeah. he's out of the country. Yeah. I actually want to turn that one into like a mobile fab shop. For no reason at all, except for because we can. Put it this way. If you guys have any questions that you want answered by Leon, leave a comment in this video below and I'll make sure that he reads them and gets back to you. But I have to read them? Yes. Okay. I'm really bad at that, but I will. I've got, I've only got, like, I got like 90 more that I have to go through and read, so. It's not too bad. Howdy, y'all. Heading off into the sunset. If you want to see more videos of that there Bel Airs, you don't tune on in. Too. Oh yeah, to Leon's Garage Adventures. Tune in next time to Leon's Garage Adventures.